Hi, welcome to another computer tutoring training session. This time we're looking at Microsoft Visio again. Uh, you might have remembered that a while ago we did how to create a flowchart from an Excel spreadsheet. And if you remember, and I noticed from a couple of comments from that one, uh, that you need to make sure that you've got the Visio online plan two version which is the or the online version but it's the online plan two version is the one I'm using which you download you pay for I think it's like 11 pound or so a month or 15 dollars and depending on exchange rates etc when you do that when you download Visio you should get the following let me just move myself down out of the way uh, actually if I close that one off so when you open up your Visio here um, here's one that I've done earlier um, and I can show you the spreadsheet from that as well. So eval process flowchart, you've got that one there. Um, and then if I just go back, this is the sort of chart basically that I've created. It it's, gives you an idea, it's a chart on uh, a flowchart that shows how we can look at the eval process in our organization. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can get an idea, eval form received, and then it's read, then the results, if they're positive, then one thing happens. Scroll down a bit here, so if it's positive, you know, then it goes to here. If it's negative for whatever reason, then we contact the client. Issue settled. If no, we keep on talking about it here. And if it is settled, it goes down and seeing it's use permissions it's given. If it's yes, we use it on post social media and then we send a thank you. Otherwise, we don't. So it's a nice, just a nice simple form uh, there. Let's just uh, fix the window again. So what I did, the difference here, instead of dragging this all out, I created it from an Excel spreadsheet. So how did I do that? Well, let's go and have a look, shall we? Um, so for instance, let's do a new one, shall we? So if I go to File and New, and I'm wanting to new, a doc, new document, here's the office one. Here's recent looking documents you can see about here. Uh, in fact, let me just get my zoom it off. So I can see that. So what we need to do is we can go to Templates, so over here. So we can click on Templates. Okay, and then in the templates, you'll have flowchart templates, if you can see here, quite straightforward. And then in the flowchart, you've got uh, templates, you've got the different diagrams here. So I've got an audit diagram here, I've got a basic flowchart, and the one I'm interested in is a cross-functional flowchart. Uh, you can use different shapes, so maybe in future videos, we'll have a look at the different shapes that you can use. Um, like we could do business process mapping or a network diagram or something. I don't know, but we'll have a look and we'll see what shapes are available. So let's have a look at the cross-functional one. And I can see here there's the cross-functional use metric. Um, now here's interesting, it says an Excel data template. Now it's worthwhile clicking on that and opening up that Excel file because it gives you some direction as to what you need to do to make this work. So for instance, you can see steps one, two, three, and, and there's a link to understand the process map, and there's a bits, process steps ID, and there's a few instructions here, and it, yeah, it takes us through that. But if I just go to the process map, this is what you're looking at here. Uh, one interesting thing, just if you're gonna copy it across to a new sheet, and it's the mistake that I made, is just make sure that you have the sheet that includes all this drop-down lists uh, here. So for instance, that looks like it's some sort of data validation going on. If I go up here, go to data validation, I can see this is the shape notation mapping sheet. It's obviously a sheet that's hidden down here, so let's go OK. See if we can unhide those sheets. There we go. Let's have a look at that sheet, see what's going there. There we go. So we can see the different shapes and the notations there, which is pretty good. doesn't seem to have any of the cross-referencing available, but, well, we'll have a, a look there. Uh, so it's probably worthwhile copying these two sheets across if we're, if we're making this. Uh, map up here. Uh, yeah, uh, this is also a table. So if you just uh, click anywhere on the data and have a look at the top, uh, and you can see uh, oh, where is it? Here? Yeah, there we go. You can see table tw tools just up here, the little design tab here. So if you click on that, then it will take you to um, the table, and you can see up on the top left-hand corner that tables automatically got a name. If you have no idea about what I'm talking about when it comes to tables, etc., then please just look at our tables video. Um, it's a bit out of date that, so we'll probably update it. Great, excellent, all right, and so what do you do here? Well, you basically put in your processes here. So this is a start one with a start shape. Well, you know, so uh, based on that here, we would type, type something like eval form received. Here we go, and then the next stage is 200, so you put that there, you decide on the shape here, and if you need any connector labels, basically. 
Uh, here, for instance, uh, form is processed or eval form red. There we go. Um, and then, say, for instance, this is a quest. Uh, the next one, uh, let's say, add another one in here. So I'm just going to, you can just tab across actually if you just want to add a new row in uh, here, or you can right click as well. So I can do the right click here if I want to and go to insert and insert table rows below or above or wherever I want it there. So say for instance the results, you know, results, I tend to put minimum information on here, question mark, and the fact is this shape here is going to be a decision shape. So I know that that shape's going to be a decision shape there. Um, that's great. And then if I wanted it there two, so if it's positive or negative, so the positive one would be P400, negative one would be P500. And then I can put my connector neighbor labels in. So positive, comma, negative. You can see that there. Let me just have a zoom in so you can see. There we go. So you can see those ones there. Brilliant. Uh, that's a decision shape here. That's great. And you go in and you add in the different decisions there. Now, the only difference with this is exactly the same as it was with the, uh, the data using the old flow charts with the data visualizer. Uh, this one here has a couple of options here for functions. So who is going to take care of this and what phase is this? So you can type in like first and second uh, phase if you want that. Uh, or you can repeat this as well if you want it to be part of the first phase as well. Um, and then you can go on and this is the second, etc. Now you didn't tune into this video here just to see me create this. So in Blue Peter fashion, here's one I've done a bit earlier. If I can just go to File uh, and uh, Open, and there should be a recent one here that we can have a quick look at. So here we go. Here's one there. Um, what I've done is I've copied this to a new page, and you can see the evaluation process done here. And I've saved this one as evaluation form processing. So now what I need to do is I need to get this form and I need to process this and bring it into Visio. So let's see if we can do that. So what I need to do is going to close down that form and I'll close down this one as here. Uh, I'm not going to save changes for this one in particular here. That's good. Uh, I'm just going to create. That's the one that I did earlier. And then uh, cross-functional flowchart. That's great. So now I need to just find that workbook. Uh, so if I just go here and I just see if I can find the... Um, uh, workbook here. I believe I stuck it under marketing improvements and I've got a couple here. Uh, let's just do that one there. That's good. It's going to be looking for the tables on that workbook and it's found one there. Process map data. You can also have a custom range where you can click on that and then it will open a box where you can just click and you can select a particular range here but I'm just going to cancel that because it's picked up a little table. Tables tend to be a lot quicker, much, much more accurate and flexible uh, because people can just keep on adding data and then you can refresh it. Right, so then we click on next and we go through all the different options here. But generally everything should fall you know, into place. It might be worthwhile for the alt description for pe those who are visually impaired that we can uh, add those ones in. Uh, uh, we can also yeah, retain the order of our column values from data to create and tick on the functional screen name if we wanted to uh, there. Yeah, that's good. Uh, let's go to next, see what happens here. Uh, this is the next steps, so the process next step, that's where we've got our P100s and the P200s, and etc. Uh, this is where we choose our shape type as well, decision, process. It's important to get those names accurate, like it's from the drop-down list, so that would be good. Uh, there's the accessibility one, alt description, that's good. Uh, well, the alt description is not pro probably, a, I don't have an alt description in there, uh, so I'm just going to swap that by process step description, drag that down, just swap it over so that um, the process step can be read out there, that's good. Great, excellent, click on next. Uh, there we go, we can have our different shapes here, start end, process, decision, the start end shape, that's good. Let's go to next there. I uh, can see all our connectors and next step ID, connector labels. Let's go to finish, see what happens, and it should be creating the diagram. Hopefully, it will look half decent. And there we go. And uh, we've got the diagram there. So after this, you're going to have to just click and muck around and do different stuff uh, there. Uh, just a couple of things that I would suggest is uh, you've got at the top here these uh, tools, the flowchart tools and the design tools, etc., that you can use to basically change stuff. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the style options you can use to change the different style here. Um, 
if you want to get rid of this outer area as well you can do there's a like a heading this like outer box here you can click on and press the, not that one there we go there is um where is it under format here or something like that. yeah there we go disband container that one's a good one there that gets rid of the outside bit and then what I like to do, draw a box around this, and then you can go to the borders here and just, uh, just make that a little bigger here, just adjust it way too big there. Let's just bring that in a little bit. Uh, that looks better, so it's still fitting on that sheet of paper here. Let's just do this one here. Drag that up just a tiny bit. Yeah, that's good. You can see the shape protection on that. Control and shifts, quite handy. You can move, let's say you get a magnifying glass, you can have a quick look in. And I'm dragging around with the right mouse button here, so I can just move around. Um, if you've coloured the backgrounds here, again, it's always a bit pernickety, but at the top here, so this is under the Home tab, uh, you've got this little button here, which is the Text Block tool. Uh, I think I've covered this on a few other videos, and that, what that allows you to do is click on the Text Block. Oops, just undo that. There we go. There we go. And then with that Block tool, I can click and I can move the text off. And of course, because this text you see has a white highlight, what I like to do is under the paragraph section, there's a little button just here. It's like an expansion button. So I can use that button here and then go to text block and then go to none for the background color. So I don't want any background color on that. And depending on how I want to see that, changing the font color if I wanted to. And then when I'm armed with that, if I double click on format painter, I can then click on these other ones here and just um, see which ones I want here. Because I can, I've double clicked on the format painter, I can go and I can change all of these items here. There we go. Uh, there you go. Where are we up? So, ooh, it's around. That's all of it. That's great. Control Shift and W. Uh, that gets rid of my camera here. But normally, Control Shift and W will allow us to view full screen. Uh, fit to window. There we go. Yeah. And there we go. I mean, there's a lot to this here. Um, generally, uh, you want to go back to your pointer tool if you want to there, but you can see that there. If you need to make your text a bit bigger, what I do is recommend is select everything and use these little buttons here. They're quite handy. Um, oops, not that one. So it's these buttons here. So if you select, if I said select all, and I went A, you see it puts everything relatively bigger. So that's quite good if I use this little A down here. Uh, it's relatively smaller, so everything's fitting in the box there. Uh, and then you need to move these things around a little bit. I mean, sometimes it gets a bit difficult. Let me just click away. And then say, you see these decisions shapes here. You've got like yes and the no. They're all the way down here. So is the issue settled? Yes. And that's going all the way down to the bottom here. Well, uh, you know, if you're following around, you don't, you don't necessarily have to... You know, you know, might not be looking down to this part here to find out if it's yes or not. So I like to use this text block tool just to click on this yes here. Make sure I've got that and move it up a little bit nearer the place here. Uh, so if it's no, again, the same issue. I just click and drag that up. Just be careful of the line. It's a bit there we go. That's it. So I'll just bring that up. You can also use the arrow keys, the cursor keys on your keyboard to bring that into place. So just from a, exactly where you want that to go. And in that way, you can a spreadsheet. Uh, into a flowchart that looks like, and this is one that I've done earlier, just change the colors, selected the lines, etc., into the different phases as well. Um, yeah, so there we go. So if uh, you need to change the um, uh, the spreadsheets, uh, you can do, and you can refresh the graphics to a certain extent. Uh, time doesn't allow me because I've, I've got to work now. <laughs> so um, time doesn't allow me to go through this, but please. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe so we can just show you how we can refresh this and update it and different best practices and the problems that I've had in this uh, regard as well. And just keep tuned as well for more Visio drawings. We can do floor plans as well and create, we've already created custom shapes in Visio, but we can maybe have a look at that in a bit more detail. And also look at the shape sheet as well behind the scenes. Um, uh, one of the things is that, say, for instance, you've got a number of different boxes that need to fit in these swim lanes. It always seems to give a massive margin. And so you can use the shape sheet to get rid of that. So we'll have a look at that as well. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this a thumbs up and uh, see you again on our next tutorial. Bye now.